is the trends and forecasts for the next uh, season. It's a much awaited presentation. And this year is no exception. We have with us Mr. PJ Aranado, celebrated Filipino lifestyle designer of international fame. He's also an eminent uh, merchandiser and branding consultant with interdisciplinary design capabilities for home and fashion, green, ethical, responsible, sustainable, social and innovative design and product developments. His portfolio spans over 25 countries. PJ has been honored with prestigious honors and awards time and again. So let's see uh, what key colors, modes, palettes, patterns, materials, designs he has in mind for the coming seasons. Presenting the autumn, winter, 19 uh, and 20, 19, uh, 20, uh, 19, 20 uh, uh, season. So we're uh, like uh, another one season ahead, you know, because the next the season for our trade fair is the spring summer, uh, because we're just, uh, oh, sorry, the autumn, winter. So um, I will, uh, there are at least four uh, categories in the presentation. First is the evolution of colors from summer, um, spring, summer, um, uh, 18 and 19. And then we go into this uh, spring, summer, this season, and then the autumn, winter, next uh, season. So um, let's start with, uh, then I will present to you the top uh, five, six colors, and then also how these are interpreted in the lifestyle um, objects. Uh, and uh, prints and patterns as well, uh, including accessories, jewelry, and home. So uh, let's start first. First slide. Uh, next slide. Please. Can we switch off the light so that we uh, because it brings out the color. It's so important. So the first important color for autumn, winter, uh, nineteen and twenty is um, uh, red. No. So if you look at the palette. The red in autumn, winter, 1819, uh, were essentially a traditional core uh, uh, red, which is a bit uh, off the, the uh, fire crop red. And then it turns um, purer and more classic red for uh, this year. If you will notice, more or less, uh, the, the, the autumn colors uh, are uh, smoky. No? Uh, in um, the European concept, including the American uh, concept of coloring, the, um, the evolution of colors will always just be mid-tone, a bit less bright for autumn, winter. It's uh, then summer, it becomes clearer, a little bit more uh, towards uh, um, the idea of spending holidays by the beach or the farm. No? So because of um, uh, in the traditional uh, thinking, it's uh, blatant to have very shocking colors for autumn, winter, but that's not really exactly true for the millennials. No? For instance, the trend now is that you have like a very dark color with a streak of luminous color, like a pinstripe of uh, bright orange, because it's very, very young. No? All right, so let's go to the next color. The next color is, it's, it's not really Asian, as in the, right le left side because it's more reddish now the next slide will show you the tendency for autumn winter next slide please which is like that now so it's a, a, a deeper uh, darker red which is more luxurious a little bit more elegant a little bit more um, um, velvety in uh, uh, feeling no so luxury uh, next please so the, the the red that's almost like Bordeaux. No, but designers like us, we always think that uh, the maroon or the deep red color is meant for your like, auntie or your grandmother because it's not really as attractive as you would have a fire truck red. No? So, uh, but, but you know, it's um, the colors will seek its own market. This is one way if you understand the market segmentations for each season, for each uh, demographic distribution, for each uh, group of buyers, you will be able to capture a color that you will adapt particularly in uh, a product, no? But I think maroon, burgundy is very, very uh, good in home, no? But in fashion, it's a bit not too uh, really um, active, all right? 
Next color. Uh, yellow. Yellow comes back, no? And in the um, uh, autumn winter last year, it's like uh, a bit nostalgia, a little bit more dusted, and then it turns again a little bit more brighter, like marigold or buttermilk in uh, summer this year. Next slide. So uh, yellow is uh, good to mix with um, uh, gray. Now, if you see this um, um, towels. They are buckled up because the next uh, big thing in fashion are buckles. Now they're running, uh, and uh, the orange has uh, uh, has more red tone for autumn winter. No, these are what you call pigmented oranges um, with, with with a lot of um, uh, meaning towards the tender and the romantic orange. No, so it's not the blatant orange. It's more like the clay terracotta. Uh, uh, orange. No? So orange is also a favorite color in home because it can substitute the color red. No? Uh, red is the, the top selling bright color in products no? because you can't go wrong with red. It's like easy carry. We call it a cross merchandise. If it doesn't sell in spring summer, the department store may be able to still carry it for the next season. No? So the inventory is uh, protected. That's why it's always, I think, why the designers sometimes, you know, they are crazy madmen, they do all of this uh, coloring that are really so bright and intense. I, I would strongly recommend that if you are in, in uh, really mass production and you are into uh, uh, long uh, term uh, selling, go to the mid tone. In tone meaning it's not too bright, it's not also too dark, so that it can cross over from autumn, winter, spring, uh, summer. Yeah? Uh, the next color is, um, um, uh, is that pink? Yeah, that's, uh, that's pink. No? Uh, pink uh, has been quite popular for the past uh, uh, seasons, but the pink that's uh, almost like uh, pearl, no? meaning this is not um, uh, bright uh, pink because in the metal industry the pink metal or the red metal sometimes they call which is a crossover like a white metal or pinkish tint was very popular now it still uh, uh, continues but for autumn winter it's sugary pink meaning it's like you know you put brown sugar like latte cafe and then make it a little bit pinkish towards the Taupe. Taupe is a color that is a combination between beige and um, a cream. No? And then put a little bit of tint. That's a very, very delicate uh, color. So, but it's a very, very good color for homes. No? It's because it, uh, it's a popular color. Uh, they studied the evolution of pink colors. It used to be only for women. Now, it's accepted as a color for men. But of course, in India, pink is um, okay for men. But there are cultural um, differences. No? Uh, Japan may not really go for it, no? because they're a black society. They're a natural society. They don't particularly like pinks. In Europe and, um, and uh, America will probably get that. But you see, if you sell to Japan, they follow the European trends. They don't follow the American trends. The American trends also follow the European trends. And there are three trends resources there, Milan, uh, Paris, and London. Huh? And the Tokyo, if you sell to Japan, they just follow the European trends. Next, please. Uh, so brown is a good color. All of these colors have meaning, no? if we call it color psychology. Uh, brown is a meaning of towards home. It's, it's, it's a, a warm color. It reminds you of neutrality. No? Um, in Jack, please don't forget natural colors. No? You're very good at it. No? Your oil finish, your natural finish. The buyers <coughs> always say, why you have forgotten the natural finish? Why? Because these are the green products, you know. Now the trend is the wood, for instance, are barely touched with anything finishing. They just sand it, put a little <coughs> vegetable oil, and that's it. No? Never mind if this is going to be scratched. No? With the consciousness of people to have highly industrialized uh, products, too much lacquering, too much spraying, you know? it doesn't help the environment. And you know, the Europeans are the first customers, consumers, and not even the buyers, who will demand something, no? 
uh, the country of origin, the agricultural products, the wildlife, uh, all of these are considered. I think you know when you export that it's quite difficult already at this time to export something that is not green, that is not uh, sustainable. Right? The browns, you know, if you look at, um, it's it's just the combination of um, um, the uh, culture of coffee. No? I think brown has been very, very popular because uh, they started, that uh, young people started to drink coffee unlike in the past. They always associate coffee for uh, old people. Now the young people drink coffee because they gather in um, branded coffee shop and then they that's where they meet. And so they started to uh, associate these colors, latte, mocha, etc. with um, coffee. It's what we call the coffee culture of the young generation. But it's not hot coffee. It's called coffee where they dump ice. <laughs> and old people find that strange. But it's a good reference, no? With uh, this color, yes. Next color is um, violet. This is the color of the year for Pantone color. So I've been searching uh, here in the fair for this color, and uh, very few has carried this, no? Uh, if not, it's not gathered all together. I wish that uh, my friend's pre presentation was on the first day, so that you'll be able to re-merchandise, group them together. Now, uh, purple is a color of mystery. Purple is a color of renaissance. Renaissance means reinvention. Now, it's a color that means differentiation. This is how the, um, uh, the forecasters, the designers, are able to uh, put this uh, thinking, no? because as the world goes into the internet, the world is also exploring space, no? And India is one of that, you know? You have your space uh, exploration. So the mystery of the purple color, violet, no? is one of the colors that's going to be very, very strong, right? So these are like just lilacs and um, eggplant colors and all that. Next, please. Uh, blue. Blue is a color that is... Um, uh, associated with uh, denim. It's the world's most favorite color. You know, last uh, seasons we have what we call black and blue. It's a blue that's indigo. Indigo is still very, very strong with buyers, no? Because sometimes the trends seeps in in the uh, upmarket designer, uh, mid, uh, mid level, and then you have the mass market. It seeps down quite slowly. No? So that's why the blue is still very popular. But blue, like denim, like indigo, which is India is very good at, no? never gets out of fashion for the last 15, 20 years. Constantly there, it just changes its hue. You, no? So here you will see that the autumn winter, it becomes um, teal, T-E-A-L. What is a teal? Teal is a color that's mixed with gray. No? So it's a beautiful color there in the middle. No? The last color there in the bottom is what you call the black and blue. It's a blue that's almost black. No? It's very, very gold in silk. No? That's what they're looking for. No? That sense of sophistication. Um, so you don't see that it's not a screaming blue. It's a beautiful blue that's uh, associated with uh, classical uh, indigo dyeing. You know, uh, so so this this blue is very important because they survey the consumers. The most uh, popular color across the age is uh, young and uh, mid to uh, uh, old uh, age bracket is blue. No, the next is uh, green. is an important color. Um, we our theme this year is about uh, leaves and flowers and uh, tropicals, it's towards conservation. No? That, that sense of awareness or pick up in fairs like in Paris or in uh, elsewhere, but it's going now going to minerals. No? So it's a very important thing that you uh, get inspired by stones, by minerals, by uh, something that's underneath the crust of um, uh, earth. So while others think about military colors, no? Now, if you see the runway and home, they put in all shades of uh, green, especially towards the... Um, you go to green. Next, I'm sorry. All right, I'll go back, go back. Uh, where is the green one? Look for the green one. So, uh, you, you know, um, um, 
the, the, the colors of them, um, and yeah, like that, no? So, the color of most green. You know the camouflage, the color of military, like that, no? But also, they also associate this with kitchen gardening. Kitchen gardening is very important in Europe. Everybody now starts to plant their own herbs and spices. The coloring are from there, no? Apart from the minerals, no? Um, this is one category that many buyers are not exploring if you are into home. Uh, something that, that they can use for, for a kitchen, no? Uh, they discovered that so many people die early. And in Europe, they, they discovered that the human beings, by touching soil, no? Touching dirt, you live longer, no? By, by hugging a plant, by touching a, a, a plant, uh, people uh, are happier and live longer because we secrete serotonin. Serotonin is a hormone in our body uh, that uh, makes you happy. Uh? So because there's winter depression in uh, Europe, during winter time, the old people, they are so depressed. Some of them, they kill, kill themselves or they die because um, of that. So they have devised you know, vertical gardens, indoor gardening, and the new range now is kitchen gardening. So like little, little things that can, you know, an 80 year old uh, woman in Europe can use as, uh, as a, put a little garden in the back of her uh, kitchen, no? So if you look at the, the coloring, it's again a bit more subdued, no? These are what you call in general off colors, no? They're not shouting, they're just all mid, mid tone um, uh, colors. Next please. A gray. Gray uh, is always there because it has become as neutral as white. No? So the gray is infused with uh, shades of uh, pink, a little shades of butter, a little shades of purple or lilac. It's not pure gray. No? You, you just put a little uh, dimensional to it. You know, um, sometimes you see the buyers, why are they so picky? They will say in their um, in their lookbook or in their mood board, they say we're really looking for the, the right um, uh, gray, no? So just tint it a little bit with some uh, shades of uh, lilac or purple, no? and you will be in business. Next is uh, the um, uh, pastels. Uh, pastels immediately is uh, a color that, that unifies all the other dark colors, no? Because to, for, for merchandisers in Europe to be able to create a three-dimensional display of their catalog and in their department stores, they have to three, use three color intensities, light, medium, and dark. No? So that's when you put your merchandise together. For buyers, sometimes it's very difficult to go to the fair, like I experienced in the shawl business uh, stores. And I said, it's so difficult to buy because it's not organized. It's not organized because number one, it can be just in color bundles. Then it's easier. Serve it in a silver platter to your buyers rather than it looks like a warehouse. All sorts of colors that doesn't mean anything. No? So if you, you put that together, no, you see, you're lucky enough because your fair is immediately after the Frankfurt Fair. The buyer in the Frankfurt Fair are very conscious. You know, that those who have been in Frankfurt, you, you know that the buyers will follow the color uh, trends. And you see the department store will all use um, uh, eggplant, violet, and mustard color. And everybody likes that. In a, all, each store that you will see, it's because it's their business structure to industrialize their color pigments, their ribbons, their, so that it creates a market. So if you're off and you don't have that color, you lose that market, right? Now, when you said you're lucky that you're immediately after the Frankfurt Fair, and when you see this guy is doing his job because he knows the colors, no? Why do we see colors first? It's the first thing that consumers see first. It's not about the pattern, it's not about the cut, it's not about the texture, it's color first. That's why in trends, it's always color, no? You don't necessarily have to, um, and change the product, no, by uh, uh, restructuring that. Only a change of color will do a lot of wonderful things. They said, how do you make your home uh, look new again? Just a fresh paint of color. 
right? It's the same with products. And you group them together so that you will have a little sophistication. Now, never mind the Indian colors. They will not relate to it. But once they see the colors that are in um, the pen, you immediately connect, right? So it's it's connecting the dot that, that from Frankfurt, they will go to uh, Delhi Fair and they see these products already, right? Okay, so you have enough time because you will have the autumn winter uh, when you do your uh, um, October show, no? Because this is still 19 um, and uh, 20, all right? So um, the next are the most important um, colors for autumn winter. Uh, so our cover says it's lilac. No? So the first color is, um, the next piece, um, is uh, moonstone violet. No? Um, this was actually a color uh, which was carried over last year. No? Um, they say that this will replace <coughs> the millennial uh, uh, pink. And this is a take off of the last color that's almost grayish um, lilac. No? Actually, in Europe, they use this already for weddings, invitations, and their interiors are in this uh, color. I like it because it's like a, a, a little grayish, no? um, that the grayish tint in the uh, purple. So this is a very important color, especially in ceramic as well. I've seen some already in the uh, trade show. Next color is... Um, the uh, blue, no? that that blue is off blue. It's not aquamarine. It's not um, that's a blue that's how I was telling you about the teal, no. So this blue will 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 uh, uh, become uh, relevant for um, uh, jewelry as well. Uh, it's like turquoise, no? That shade of turquoise. The next important color is. Uh, Pumpkin latte, which is the brown. They just romanticize the name. No, it's actually brown. <laughs> brown with a latte. No, remember the Starbucks. Uh, what do you have here? Your brands of coffee. Yeah, like that. No. Uh, so, so these colors are are also uh, very um, um, relatable to um, um, uh, cuisine. No? or uh, uh, gastronomy. The next important color is um, red and brown. So it's red that has a shade of, uh, of, of brown. No? So brown, if you see, is we're trying to replace the black. No? But there is a brown that's also very, very popular. As designers, it doesn't go out of fashion. We call it bitter chocolate. You know, you, you, you enjoy your dark chocolate. Like that, it's like that. It's black, it's almost brown. We call it bitter, because you know, it tastes bitter, right? The chocolate, that color is very, is, is good, no? Whether in textiles or in hard goods, that's um, uh, very good. But make sure that your uh, brown or red brown has a little bit of uh, burgundy. You see, all these colors are becoming a bit more sophisticated. You know the colors, we have primary colors, which are the bright red, yellow, orange, um, uh, or uh, red, uh, green, uh, yellow, and blue, not that one. And then you have the secondary colors. These ones are the mid-tone, off colors, right? And the last color that uh, is very important is the living green, the olive. No? Now I've seen a lot in a runway in Europe, which, you know, why is the runway the, the barometer of the next things to happen because they get the mileage of the media first. Huh? What happens in fashion translates into the home. So if you're conscious, you try to see the patterns, the colors from fashion, translated that into your home linens, into graphics of your ceramics or paint on your furniture. Huh? So this, this, this uh, green, they, they do a lot of sequence. On it and it's fantastic it looks really so fresh and nice that creates a new look for the market in Europe next color um, oh, sorry now we go to the interpretation in lifestyle so this one interprets the color you see that it's subtle huh? this very sophisticated shades of green with um, uh, burgundy or deepened uh, red brown all right next please so uh, this is young. They they have this um, uh, um, uh, public spaces uh, installation 
anything that makes life happier. No? This is addressed more towards the, the millennials because they like denim. No? So this blue is dem denimized, right? So I think if you've seen our runway presentations, we have all of these kinds of denim look because 60 to 70 percent of the world market are 30 years old below. They're the denim society. No? Uh, but the denim has a fantastic uh, evolution. In Northeast, I so um, excited that they have uh, bamboo denims. If you have seen them, I said, wow, this is uh, a flag uh, item for the exporters to show them. Unfortunately, it's not uh, discovered because, you know, I mean, they're not as aggressive as uh, marking, but it's a fantastic textile because it's made of bamboo, and yet it's denim, no? So maybe you can help them market. Uh, the next one is, um, um, we call it glitter rum. Remember the, how you call it? The confetti. And it's going to be sequenced, metallic. No? Now, the, 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 it become richer. The, the richness is that because of the technology for uh, gluing uh, rhinestones. And you have that in India. No? Everything is glued. In the past, you have to stitch one inch. Right? And that's a lot of labor, and therefore the materials goes up in, in price. Not anymore. Because actually, there is like uh, iron on. No? You put the pattern on the bits, it's computerized. No? The, the computer will, will arrange the, the bits in there. But what does it make, what will it make different from China, because they do that, or India, the computerized bidding, is you have to add something that's made by hand, always. When you do like, let's say, self-screening, I've seen a lot of bugs here, that's really made from China. The, the, the Indian has to have, to have some uh, touch of artisanal, uh, handmade craft. Mr. Kumar is always conscious about that. Your EPC is director said, you know, if it's garment, it has to be um, uh, artisanal, handmade uh, garment. So, but we are conscious about the price, right? How much is a container cost now? It has gone up. How much? It, I think it's like 50%. So the, the, the cost of containers alone, the buyers are complaining. So now, if you self screen or you photographic self screen, put a little touches of paint that's made by hand, please. No? And put a little bit work there that it's also made artisanal. Because that's, that's, we call this category slow fashion. No? Slow fashion is conscious about the environment, no? that you do labor work rather than machine. You know, in China, they have this ceramic. It, Thousands of them, they go in the, in the conveyor, and the spray paint is just like that. But that's not India. India is more like um, the, um, uh, no. So they also have like say, pexelized uh, pellets, because there's a new art form of pexelized uh, computer works. No, this is very young, but makes it um, um, uh, new to all. No? And the next one, we, um, we call this the, um, Happy film. No, this is like a, a vintage um, a painting, for instance. No? Um, th there is like city street. So this is the importance of flowers. No, flowers is a symbol of peace already in the world. No? So you can go wrong with the flowers. But I always tell each one: if you don't know what you're going to do with your prints and, and patterns, you can go wrong with flowers. It's always there. No? It never gets out of fashion. Uh, I have my set of designers, and these are all boys, men. And sir, we're so tired of making flowers already. But that's what the buyer wants. Because 80% of the buyers are, or the consumers who go to the department stores are women, right? Where are the men? They play golf, they're there drinking beer. <laughs> so that's why right. your house will always have that flower, flower because the wife is the ones that shops for the husband. No? Next. So flowers, don't uh, forget. Then you have the, the, the playful, uh, playful uh, uh, plum, which is the matte finishes on metallic finish, and a little bit rounded, a little bit um, 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 with body. Now sometimes the metal looks like it's inflated plastic, no? because 
they say there is already 38 billion tons of plastic in this world. No, this is where China is going to lose with from India because you do a lot of metals. The world's most recyclable material is glass and metal. No, so if you turn the plate around and if you do all of this plastic, no, there is this manufacturer that just bought all the plastic and they said, what are you going to do with that? With that? Sir, I am going to copy them into metal. I said, fantastic. No? So, you know, just, just translate. There are monoblocks, and these monoblocks are made of plastic. No? If you can do that into metal, that would be great. Because once metal retires after use, you can, it's a malleable material. You can bring it again to the junk shop, they melt it and use it again. Plastic, no. Uh, it takes 25 years to have this uh, pet bottle uh, disintegrate in nature. It already forms uh, like uh, how many kilometers of garbage in the Pacific Ocean. No? Right? Next. Um, creative spaces. This is where we're saying that women now are trying to create their own little garden in their kitchen where they just pick up their rosemary and their yeah. So they need, I think there are one exhibitor here with the, that idea. So this is the co-working space where you have um, your um, uh, uh, families are started to, to cook again and, and bring uh, their family together. The fast food has taken away the time of, of families and then the children goes to uh, McDonald's and don't spend uh, sit down with your families already. So something that will uh, create the togetherness. No? Next. Um, so for lifestyle and interior, next. Uh, we have a um, very uh, uh, pastel colors. And this is where you have your uh, woman in Europe can use as, uh, as a, put a little garden in the back of her uh, kitchen. No? So if you look at the, the coloring, it's again a bit more subdued. No? These are what you call in general off colors. No? They're not shouting. They're just oh, mid, mid tone um, uh, colors. Next, please. A gray. Gray uh, is always there because it has become as neutral as white. No? So the gray is infused with uh, shades of uh, pink, a little shades of butter, a little shades of purple or lilac. It's not pure gray. No? You, you just put a little uh, dimensional to it. You know, um, sometimes you see the buyer's wire, so they pick it. They will say in their... Um, in their lookbook or in their mood board, they say we're really looking for the, the right um, uh, gray. No? So just tint it a little bit with some uh, shades of uh, lilac or purple, no? and you will be in business. Next is uh, the um, uh, pastels. Uh, pastels immediately is uh, a color that, that unifies all the other dark colors, no? because to, for, for merchandisers in Europe to be able to create a three-dimensional display of their catalog and in their department stores, they have to three, use three color intensities, light, medium, and dark. No? So that's when you put your merchandise together. For buyers, sometimes it's very difficult to go to the fair, like I experienced in the show business uh, stores. And I said, it's so difficult to buy because it's not organized. It's not organized because number one, it can be just in color bundles. Then it's easier serve it in a silver platter to your buyers rather than it looks like a warehouse. All sorts of colors that doesn't mean anything. No? So if you you put that together, no, you see you're lucky enough because your fair is immediately after the Frankfurt Fair. The buyer in the Frankfurt Fair is very conscious. You know that those who have been in Frankfurt. You, you know that the buyers will follow the color uh, trends, and you see the department store will all use um, uh, eggplant, violet, and mustard color, and everybody likes that. In a, all, each store that you will see, it's because it's their business structure to industrialize the color pigments, the ribbons, their, so that it creates a market. So if you're off and you don't have that color, you lose that market, right? 
Now, when you said you're lucky that you're immediately after the Frankfurt Fair, and when you see this guy is doing his job because he knows the colors, no? Why do we see colors first? It's the first thing the consumers see first. It's not about the pattern, it's not about the cut, it's not about the texture, it's color first. That's why in grants, it's always color. No, you don't necessarily have to um, uh, change the product no? by uh, uh, restructuring <coughs> that. Only a change of color will do a lot of wonderful things. They said, how do you make your home uh, look new again? Just a fresh paint of color. Right? It's the same with products. And you group them together so that you will have a little sophistication. Now, never mind the Indian colors. They will not relate to it. But once they see the colors that are in um, the trend, you immediately connect, right? So it's it's connecting the dot that, that from Frankfurt, they will go to uh, Delhi Fair and they see these products already, right? Okay, so you have enough time because you will have the autumn winter uh, when you do your uh, um, October show, no? Because this is still 19 um, and uh, 20, all right? So, um, the next are the most important um, colors for autumn winter. No? So, our cover says it's lilac. No? So, the first color is, um, the next piece, um, is uh, moonstone violet. No? Um, this was actually a color uh, which was carried over last year. No? Um, they say that this will replace <coughs> the millennial uh, uh, pink. And this is a take off of the last color that's almost grayish um, lilac, no? Actually, in Europe, they use this already for weddings, invitations, and their interiors are in this uh, color. I like it because it's like a, a, a little grayish, no? Um, that the grayish tint in the uh, purple. So this is a very important color, especially in ceramic as well. I've seen some already in the uh, trade show. Next color is... Um, the uh, blue, no? that that blue is off blue. It's not aquamarine. It's not um, that's a blue that's how I was telling you about the teal, no. So this blue will 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 uh, uh, become uh, relevant for um, uh, jewelry as well. Uh, it's like turquoise, no? That shade of turquoise. The next important color is. Uh, Pumping latte, which is the brown. They just romanticize the name. No, it's actually brown. <laughs> brown with a latte. No, remember the Starbucks. Uh, what do you have here? Your brands of coffee. Yeah, like that. No. Uh, so, so these colors are are also uh, very um, um, relatable to um, um, uh, cuisine. No? or uh, uh, gastronomy. The next important color is um, red and brown. So it's red that has a shade of, uh, of, of brown. No? So brown, if you see, is we're trying to replace the black. No? But there is a brown that's also very, very popular. As designers, it doesn't go out of fashion. We call it bitter chocolate. You know, you, you, you enjoy your dark chocolate. Like that? It's like that. It's black, it's almost brown. We call it bitter, because you know it tastes bitter, right? The chocolate. That color is very is, is good, no? Whether in textiles or in hard goods, that's um, uh, very good. But make sure that your uh, brown or red brown has a little bit of uh, burgundy. You see, all these colors are becoming a bit more sophisticated. You know the colors, we have primary colors, which are the bright red, yellow, orange, um, uh, or uh, red, uh, green, uh, yellow, and blue, not that one. And then you have the secondary colors. These ones are the mid-tone, off colors, right? And the last color that uh, is very important is the living green, the olive. No? Now I've seen a lot in a runway in Europe, which, you know, why is the runway the, the barometer of the next things to happen because they get the mileage of the media first. No? What happens in fashion translates into the home. So if you're conscious, you try to see the patterns, the colors from fashion, translated that into your home linens, into graphics of your ceramics or 
paint on your furniture. No? So this, this, this uh, green, they, they do a lot of sequence on it and it's fantastic. It looks really so fresh and nice. That creates a new look for the market in Europe. Next color. Um, oh, sorry. Now we go to the interpretation in lifestyle. So this one interprets the color. You see that it's subtle. No? This very sophisticated shades of green with um, uh, burgundy or deepened uh, red brown. All right. Next, please. So uh, this is young. They they have this um, uh, uh, public spaces uh, installation. Anything that makes life happier. No? This is addressed more towards the, the millennials because they like denim. No? So this blue is dem denimized, right? So I think if you've seen our runway presentations, we have all of these kinds of denim look because 60 to 70% of the world market are 30 years old below. They're the denim society. No? Uh, but the denim has a uh, fantastic uh, evolution. In Northeast, I so um, excited that they have uh, bamboo denims. If you have seen them, I said, wow, this is uh, a flag uh, item for the exporters to show them. Unfortunately, it's not uh, discovered because, you know, I mean, they're not as aggressive as uh, marking, but it's a fantastic textile because it's made of bamboo, and yet it's denim, no? So maybe you can help the market. Uh, the next one is, um, um, we call it glitter rum. Remember the, how you call it? The confetti. And it's going to be sequenced, metallic. No? Now, the, 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 it become richer. The, the richness is that because of the technology for uh, gluing uh, rhinestones. And you have that in India, no? Everything is glued. In the past, you have to stitch one inch, right? And that's a lot of labor, and therefore the materials goes up in, in price. Not anymore, because actually there is like, uh, I report the pattern, the bits, it's computerized. No? The, the computer will, will arrange the, the bits in there. But what does it make, what will it make different from China, because they do that, or India, the computerized bidding, is you have to add something that's made by hand. Always, when you do like, let's say, self-screening, I've seen a lot of bags here that's really made from China. The, the, the Indian has to have, to have some uh, touch of artisanal, uh, handmade craft. Mr. Kumar is always conscious about that. Your EPC is to requested. You know, if it's garment, it has to be um, uh, artisanal, handmade uh, garment. So, but we are conscious about the price. Right? How much is a container cost now? It has gone up. How much? It, I think it's like 50%. So the, the, the cost of containers alone, the buyers are complaining. So now, if you self screen or you photographic self screen, put a little touches of paint that's made by hand, please. No? And put a little bit work there that is also made artisanal. Because that's, that's, we call this category slow fashion. No? Slow fashion is conscious about the environment. No? that you do labor work rather than machine. You know, in China, they have this ceramic. It, thousands of them, they go in the, in the conveyor, and the spray paint is just like that. But that's not India. India is more like um, the, um, uh, no. So they also have, like, say, pexelized uh, pellets, because there's a new art form of pexelized uh, computer works. No, this is very young, that makes it um, um, uh, new to all. No? And the next one, we, um, we call this the um, happy film. No, this is like a um, vintage uh, uh, painting, for instance. No? Um, th there is like city street. So this is the importance of flowers. No? Flowers is a symbol of peace already in the world. No? So you can't go wrong with the flowers. But I always tell each one, if you don't know what you're going to do with your prints and patterns, you can go wrong with flowers. It's always there. No? It never gets out of fashion. Uh, I have my set of designers. And these are all boys, men. That, Sir, we're so tired of making flowers already. But that's the, what the buyer wants. Because 80% of the buyers are, or the consumers who go to the department stores are women, right? 
What are the men? They play golf. They're there bringing beer. <laughs> so that's why right. your house will always have the flower flower because the wife is the ones that shops for the husband. Huh? Next. So flowers, don't uh, forget. Then you have the, the, the playful, uh, playful uh, uh, plum, which is the matte finishes on metallic finish and a little bit rounded, a little bit um, 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 with body. Now sometimes the metal looks like it's inflated plastic now because they say there is already 38 billion tons of plastic in this world. No? This is where China is going to lose wheat from India because you do a lot of metals. The world's most recyclable material is glass and metal. No? So if you turn the plate around and if you do all of this plastic, no? there is this manufacturer that just bought all the plastic and they said, what are you going to do with that? With that? Sir, I am going to copy them into metal. I said, fantastic. No? So, you know, just, just translate. There are monoblocks, and these monoblocks are made of plastic. No? If you can do that into metal, that would be great. Because once metal retires after use, you can, it's a malleable material. You can bring it again to the junk shop, they melt it and use it again. Plastic, no. Uh, it takes 25 years to have this uh, pet bottle uh, disintegrate in nature. It already forms uh, like uh, how many kilometers of garbage in the Pacific Ocean. No? Right? Next. Um, creative spaces. This is where we're saying that women now are trying to create their own little garden in their kitchen where they just pick up their rosemary and their you know, So they need, I think there are one exhibitor here with the, that idea. So this is the co-working space where you have um, your um, uh, uh, families are started to, to cook again and, and bring uh, their family together. The fast food has taken away the time of, of families and then the children goes to um, McDonald's and don't spend uh, sit down with their families already. So something that will uh, create the togetherness. No? Next. Um, so for lifestyle and interior, next. Uh, we have um, the very um, uh, pastel colors. And this is where you have your... Uh, the next one is um, delicate essentials. All of these pastels, the wood has less finishing. It's not lacquered. It's not the heavy with the, what you call, dark wood. No? This has changed the concept because before the buyers were looking, we want our wood to be really heavy with dark antique finish. Now, it's barely not there. Meaning, there is no UCC, uh, maybe sandpaper, sand, uh, what do you call it? Um, sanding paper and your lacquer, uh, your sealer, and that's it, no? So, uh, neutrals, and this is where they say, India has forgotten the natural colors, no? And then I, I encourage you to shift back to something that's naturally untouched by lacquer or something. The next one is um, uh, very, uh, very um, uh, simple. Do you have the pink one? Every, elevated uh, every day? No, it's not. Uh, backwards, backwards, backwards. Uh, no, forward, forward. I'm sorry. Go to the last slide, please. You're lost. Yes, forward. Yes, forward. All right. Then we have this. Uh, uh, people are so stressed up with life, and they wanted something that. Uh, uh, maybe I should. Uh, think so. Uh, uh, light and uh, easy, no? So we, we have this uh, intricate lace work. Next, please. And then we have raw yet refined. Uh, this is like we call the modern primitive, no? Again, there's less finishing. Um, the, the, the surface is the one that gives you the uh, design, no? We, uh, most of us for, have forgotten that texture is a very important design element. And then the next one is uh, retro brides. This is like the um, um, colors that are uh, from borrowed from 1920s to 1930s, if you remember the Tupperware era. No? So next one. So these are the key um, uh, materials, quartz, wood, 
you have it there. You can take a picture because we don't have the time, right? Uh, something that is um, uh, manipulated, including pulp. No? Uh, next color, the uh, next material. The finishes are no, uh, as, as simple. Oil rubbing is very popular. Matte finish, no? market free, and um, uh, wrinkled or crumpled. No? It's not iron. Next. Next one. Uh, then the patterns. The patterns are crackling, uh, trellis. No, uh, these are uh, creates light ash, light and uh, bright shadows. No. Next, how many minutes more? I all right because there was somebody queuing me. And then there's this. Uh, the key shapes are uh, one is the most important is wrapping. The other is um, uh, casting. Uh, molding, no? uh, interlacing. No? So um, we call this the pare down look. No? For accessories and footwear, right, the uh, thing is the multicolor. This fantastic Indian company who does uh, iridescent no? and is doing very, very well on metal. Something like from the uh, rhinestones, it translated into metal. We had it uh, in the runway earlier. Next, please. So uh, these ones, no? the uh, Crafted bags are driven by the shapes of baskets, which are a lot of bead work. No? And that this is for India because this is where you're good at. No? A lot of beading on bags will be a big, you know, they call it the bead craft uh, look. Next. Uh, they, they mix together glass with uh, bead work. No? So glass is uh, going to be an important um, element that's going to be in the jewelry and uh, bags. You incorporate those. Next. Um, we have, next please. Uh, then, then we have, you see this uh, playful uh, uh, coloring of purple. Very uh, subdued uh, colors, but the, the, the idea is on the belts and uh, if you do some uh, jewelry, which is uh, the shape of these are, um, uh, we call it infinity. It's just like, you know, like waves, right? Next one already, something like that. So uh, towards the green. Something that's found object, right? Next is glass light. They're not necessarily glass, but they can be resin, they can be PVC, they can be something, but imitates glass, right? With some kind of artisanal uh, metal uh, work there, no? Uh, next, we have industrial joints. Now this is very young. Uh, where you, your uh, joints are you know, riveting and uh, screws and eyelets. In the past, there was what we call the hardware-free bags, where there's no metal. Now it has returned. But the metals are eco-friendly uh, uh, as well, because this is towards the engineering uh, architectural bags, no? But clean. It's your rivet that will create the accent. All right, next. Logo hardware. This is where you can ask your buyers to give them their logo and create uh, battles for them. This is the next big thing because this is 1960s uh, look. No? It's coming back, vintage, uh, so including the 1920s. Usually the trend is after five years, it returns back. So try to make some logo uh, battle. Now next, next. Then motif buckles, butterflies, uh, snake, etc. for buckles. No? The, um, rescue all of these uh, molds that you have from your buckles. No? Next is uh, multicolored. This is the next big thing. Yes, combination of colors all together. Crazy, crazy. Because this is the, the one that I like to do most. It's called the multicultural mixture of patterns from all over the world put together. Not necessarily Indian, but maybe Peruvian, Colombian, and all that. No? Uh, accessories and footwear, like this one, it's a buckle that's made of fur. Like that. No? Next. Uh, Multicolor. So the, the, the iridescent look continues. No? From metal to all this, um, just pixelized, just sort of colors put together. Crazy, all right? Next one, no, huh? This is so uh, advanced uh, for men, no? Uh, so, but I think the necklace can be, you put the uh, fresh farm pearls or pearls that are uh, fake, no? Uh, I've seen one in New York lately, I've seen black people, they put pearls on their uh, earrings for men, 
No? Uh, next, it's a crazy world. <laughs> then, uh, the ma modern mythology. Great from the Greek mythology, from the Roman Empire. No? Put, put all of this together. This is what you call the, 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 the multicultural cross, you know. The, you have a lot of Indian icons, no? Uh, the mystery of the past. Next, please. Uh, then, uh, heritage classic. The heritage classic goes back to the 1920s, like in the movies. This includes uh, logo, monograms, uh, the, uh, what do you call this, you know, Chanel. All of this in, in umbrella, in, in box, in go and research this um, uh, 1920s, 30s, uh, even to the 1960s uh, prints, no? Uh, next one is, again, the, the buttons of your uh, shawls and on your boxes are the, something that you found from nature, no? Broken, broken stone, broken glass, horn, etc. Um, because it started in Italy, they tried to just use whatever they see in the factory, even if they're broken, and still them, and still use them. The dark crystal is a very important thing in accessories. Next, please. So these dark crystals that uh, you see, you see those glass that looks like gemstones. It's, we call it faceted in the past. Now they call it gemstones. No? You see a cut stone, rough, you break up a, a stone, and the stone breaks, and that's the shape of your object. Same for your jewelry. It's uncut, it's, it's really rough. Next, uh, you have the uh, uh, re-engineering classics. You know the plug, argyle? Argyle. No, the European, uh, you know. So these are like uh, when you were still young, it, it comes back to the new generations. Next one, please. So uh, then you have the uh, uh, the shiny with the mat, the uh, underworld, uh, because this is a very young look. No? Uh, a lot of rings also is coming back. Next. Uh, for printed patterns, yes, please. So if you see, uh, the first first one is uh, yes please. Uh, the first one is um, this all stripes in different colors, no, and mixed together. This is the way to go now, no. They have appliques and um, like uh, patchwork, all all kinds of patterns put together but organized. It's not just anything you pick up. Uh, next please. Uh, here you see these uh, layered variations. All kinds of um, patterns on patterns. Crazy, no? Some of them are upcycled materials. You find this plastic, you weave in there, etc. No? So these are weaving uh, in the fabric. No? There are two embellishments that you can do on textiles. On the fabric, which is easy, and in the fabric. So when you do that in the fabric, you are going to be unique because it's, it's not easy to do that. No? You engineer the texture. Next. Uh, multi fog. This one is just a combination of several ethnic textures and patterns put together. This is the biggest look now. They're putting all of these uh, uh, prints from from India, from Peru, from uh, Africa. No, put together. Next, uh, like this one. I researched on this image from the runway. The first one is really pure, pure ethnic. You see it like costume. The second one is a modern takeoff. There's a little tint of zebra. There's a little tint of um, a little story about uh, animal print and stripes and like that. Bold, but mixed together, all right? Next, uh, here, I gathered this. So I put all of this um, uh, from the Northeast. This, you put that there in ceremony, it's red and white. So I put the patterns together. Then I said, why don't I introduce a lace in there to make it modern, traditional and modern, put together. And I came up with that uh, patchwork of red uh, and white. And same here, your, your knitwear, black and white, etc. You get the spirit? Yeah, okay, they got it. <laughs> Next. Uh, the graphic impact is basically black and white. You can't go wrong with black and white a bit. It, it pulls your eyes towards your product, whether it's ceramic, it's wood, etc. Black and white, please put something in your collection that's black and white. All right. Next, uh, here. 
This is very young. No? It's black and white, and then they put a strip of a color, just a color. Maybe it's orange, maybe it's top, maybe it's a, it's a nice uh, look. No? It's not about us, it's about the young people, probably. All right? So, next is the pencil and paper. This is a take of the graffiti. And I think uh, this is not boring anymore because, you know, you, you do a sketch. This is, uh, you know, the, the trends is always a polarity. Something that's maybe fast, which is internet. Something that is slow, which is like uh, drawing it, no? Just draw with pencil. And that's a very nice uh, graphic for you in just all colors, if you will, no? Next one. Uh, next pattern is liquid movements. This is a takeoff from the watercolor flowers. Now they call it liquid. No? It's like you put a water on the fabric, put some color, and it spreads. It's a nice pattern that they're looking as well. So it's very, very fluid that, rem that reminds you of nature as well. Next is, um, all right, eclectic mix. What is this? All right, okay. We conclude. All right, the other is the eclectic mix. No? Just put together. And then uh, the night, uh, it's the night, uh, and then the woodland is about the wood. Next, next, woodland. Uh, or this one is, uh, what is this? Um, yes, next please. I think, uh, yeah, woodland, no? Uh, but dark, it's like uh, midnight, next. Here I gather this together. It's a beautiful colors of three uh, light, medium, and dark colors. Like the, in the woods. Next, uh, raw and natural, the texture of uh, organics. Next, and the elemental design, which is very very simple from the gems, no? And uh, minerals. Okay. Next, and then holographic iridescent. This is still continuing. Next, and then you have folk florals, uh, borrowed from the past, and then. Uh, you have seemingly, uh, these are graphics again from uh, uh, modern uh, art, paintings, no? and then uh, from the crops of nature, no? um, and then you have abstract florals, next, and then you have bright uh, retro, uh, and that's it. So, I hope you had fun. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you too. <laughs> Thanks so much.